Hi, I'm Gabi Lenner and I'm with Azure Data Explorer team. In this video, I will show you how to troubleshoot a loaded cluster. We will start with diagnosing that there is an issue, then we will analyze the root cause, and later on we will resolve the issue. So usually it starts when you run a query, and the query takes very long, or even it doesn't return at all. So for example here, I'm running a query that brings back 10 records for my commands and queries in a specific database. And I see that the operation takes very long. And it doesn't return after more than 10 seconds, or more than 8 seconds. So this is not something that I'm used to get from my Azure Data Explorer cluster. I want to see it was, it was a, if it was a one-time um, issue, or is it something that still it happens. So I'm running the same operation again, and I see that again it takes very long. So at this point I need to assume that something is not healthy uh, about my cluster and something uh, uh, um, happens which I need to find and resolve. So the next step is going and, and viewing the metrics <coughs> of the cluster. I'm going to the metrics blade in Azure Portal, and I start by selecting the CPU metric. Now I see that on average the CPU peaked and reached around 9% uh, a few times in the last 24 hours. But at this point I'm interested in the max values to see if there is some kind of uh, an overloading happening in some of my uh, machines. So I actually see that in the last th uh, 24 hours I had a few times uh, peaks of 100% CPU which is not a healthy state for the cluster. Most of the time it was below 10%, but the peaks are the ones that interest me at this point. So in order to uh, uh, better see the issue, I'm going and filtering the time range uh, only to the last 30 minutes to see if the problem still occurs and to see if it's very severe. So actually I see that in the last 30 minutes, most of the time the max values for my CPU were around 100%, which is not a good state for the cluster and, and I need to understand why this is happening. Another metric I can add at this point to see how uh, my cluster is responding is the keep alive metric. This metric basically says uh, whether the cluster is responding uh, to queries sent to it. So actually I see that in the last 30 minutes I had a few drops to zero which means that basically during this time range the cluster was not responding at all which is something uh, I need to understand and this is not what I should expect. So I'll go to my query blade in order to further analyze which users and which applications are consuming the cluster's resources. So I'll start by checking the overall number of activities happening on my cluster and I'm starting with the dot show commands and queries operation and then I'll summarize the total activity uh, number and bin it per one day. Here I see that overall the number of my activities on the cluster is quite steady, somewhere in between 8,000 to 9,000 activities per day. So this is probably not the explanation for the rise in CPU consumption that I'm seeing. Then I run uh, um, a query in order to analyze which users I are taking the majority of CPU. So again I'm starting with the dot show commands and queries operation and I'm doing a summary for the total CPU time by user and I'm presenting the top 10 users by CPU time. Um, so I can go to each of these users and, and try to check what kind of queries they are running against the cluster and whether these queries can be optimized or whether these queries should be executed on a different cluster. Uh, next I'm doing a similar thing with applications. So I'm checking which applications are using my cluster's resources. So I see here that mainly Power Query and Custo Explorer are the big consumers from application point of view. So probably I have Power BI users that are consuming data from the cluster using Power BI dashboards or uh, users running queries against my cluster using Custo Explorer. Next I will search for cache misses. Cache misses happen when I'm querying data that is not stored in my hot cache and rather stored in my uh, storage. This means that 
uh, when running the query during query time, I need to go and fetch data and load it to my hot cache and only then query it. So by running the dot show queries operation and adding um, a column that contains the cache misses, I'm sorting and bringing only the 10 activities that resulted in the biggest cache misses during uh, uh, the last period. So I see that I have here uh, three or four activities that had quite a significant cache miss. And in this table, I can see the client activity ID. I can see the text, the query itself. I can see the database, the duration of the operation, the state it completed with. For example, I have here two queries that were canceled, probably due to the long uh, operation time. I have here user data, I have application data, and I have additional columns that will help me to analyze this problem. I can also add a specific query to see the user data. So I'll be able to approach these specific users in order to understand what the query is that they were using and to analyze together with them whether we should change the caching policy in order to support their queries. In addition, I can run the show journal operation, which gives me a list of all of the metadata changes in my cluster. Here I will see changes in functions, I will see removal of extents, and so on and so forth. This can give me an insight about changes in my uh, cluster that might result in the overall CPU consumption usage. Uh, for example, if a function was changed and it is now less efficient, that could be a, a trigger for consuming more uh, CPU and more memory. In summary, when I see performance degradation in my Azure Data Explorer cluster, I probably need to do a combination of the following. I need to, an to analyze the issue. I might consider adding more resources, um, changing my caching policy, and also optimizing my queries to make sure they are running more efficiently. Thank you.